Welcome home, boys. Oh. I uh, I've had my piri piri rap at the uh, at the <laughs> service station, and uh, yes, I'm back, and uh, I'm in an enthusiastic mood. Good, uh, Ma- Matthew. Extremely. Do you have any? Um, do you like donuts? You're a fan of donuts. Yes, I do. Okay. I, what's I'm, your donut? I'm a, I'm a big do- fan. What's your donut? Because we were, it, uh, it, it's going to describe your personality. Uh, I, you know what? I, I just like the the plain ones with the yeah. bit of a d- uh, dusting sugar. Yes, just glazed. I used to cinnamon. Yeah, I used to like the other ones. Okay. Yeah, the cinnamon. I, I used to like the uh, the Krispy Kremes, but um, oh man, they can. Whew, I woke <laughs> up one morning and the, it was a, it was like an ant's nest hovering. In the... <laughs> <laughs> well, you are reliable, lo- mm-hmm. loyal. Well planned, oh, yeah. but not a risk taker. You're not a risk oh, taker. Oh, really? But uh, I do know you. You're a massive risk taker. Yes, I am. Yes, so, yes. I, think I risk life and limb every single week for our show. You flinch. do absolutely. You do. Yeah. You Thanks. Do. Hey, yeah. uh, Matthew. What about yesterday's game? Your man, little uh, Lockie Galvin. Good player, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very, very good footballer. It, it, it goes to show, boys, like. Um, Week one, and Benji was just feeling out the side. He had the two talented youngsters in, Galvin and uh, and Sullivan, Jaden Sullivan. And they, they tell me that week he had a bit of a uh, testy uh, hamstring, did Aiden Caesar. But you see the difference it's made to the side when you put an experienced playmaker in there alongside a younger guy. Makes It makes a huge difference. And I think we saw that yesterday as well, guys. Uh, on the other side of the coin... Um, <clears throat> Yesterday it was you know, Blaze Tulangi and and Dylan Brown. When you move a young guy, whether it's Lachlan Galvin or, or, or Blaze Tulangi, and you put him in the halves, what you want you want an experienced half alongside him, you know, to steer the side, to put the you know to put the icing on the on, on the sets of six with their last tackle options, just all those factors. It makes a huge difference. It made a big difference to to Lachlan. And yesterday you could see that with Blaze. Bla- I want to see Blaze in the halves uh, get an opportunity alongside Mitch Moses, but. You know, Dil- Dylan's world class player, but he's never going to be that bloke to ruin. Well, I don't think. Well, he's certainly not that player now. The one to steer him around the park and do that chief playmaker role. They were short a little bit there yesterday, I thought, Parramatta. Well, Fletch, you were sort of tossing up the idea, which I didn't hate. You said, what about um, when they're all systems go again? Blaze to fullback, mm. Gutho in the centres. Yeah. Well, I was just saying that yeah. because, uh, you know, <laughs> yeah. Yes, well, they're looking for an X-factor. Yes. So Brad Arthur yeah. said, I-, I want an X-factor at the back. There's no more X-factoring than this kid. Mm. Like, yeah. The, when it, yeah. the show That's and right. go, it, he beat the first tackle pretty much every time he took the line on. Yeah, I, and I think, Fletch, if you're look, looking to, to push him into the spine and get more out of him, I, I think there's merit in that. Mm. Because I, I just think to to go... Second game, I was excited to see him. It's a great show of faith from Brad Arthur, but it's a tough ass taking a young young guy uh, and then putting him second game in, in into in, into the halves. That, that's that's tough. But yeah, I, I think easing him in and getting more out of him, I think it's worthwhile having it for Brad Arthur having a crack with him at fullback. Tell you what, wasn't it a great week for the Tigers? Not just the game they played, but Thursday night they got to see. Jerome Luai play seven. Mm. So he just mm. went berserk. And this Panthers team, the more I watch them, Matty, the, the, the closest thing we've got to the NFL as far as you've got an offense team and a defense team. Yeah. Whenever there's a kick that yeah. goes downfield, the backs just say, hey, you forwards rest up. We'll take command of this. And then you guys yep. just get your line speed and the kick chase ready for the next set. It's pretty much like that, isn't it? It is. And, you know, we were just talking talking then about, you know, rep- basically trying to replace or live with, basically still get success when you've lost your primary playmaker. And that's one of the things that have de- that's defined the success of Penrith in the last three years is the fact that when they lose Nathan or at times they've lost Jerome, they just, they'll just tinker with their, their system just a little bit. But the, what it shows is the system of play they've got in place, it works. It can absorb a, a loss to a, to a key man. Like last year, how many... Did they win five from six without yep. without Nathan? Yeah, five from six, and you, and they did it the year before with Sean O'Sullivan. Yep, they did it last year with Jack Cogger, and this year young Sh- uh, Schneider's stepped in there and was fantastic. First up, they have a better record with him out, but as Isaiah Yo was stating, he said we we all lift when we know yeah. Nathan mm. coming out there. But it is I've never seen. I mean, when Joey was ruled out, 
you mm. knew it, it, the whole well the bookies knew the market yep. switched unbelievably. It doesn't move as much. I went back and had a look at as even like even the bookies know that yep. the Panthers side even without a player like a Nathan Cleary, yeah. it's, you don't want to be saying it, but. Yep. They wouldn't have won the comp last year without Nathan, what he did in that grand no. final. Righto, boys. If you had to throw someone no. up now who – and things will change, of course. Who's the major threat to them right now? I, I personally think – I think the Warriors are going to be that team. I think the Warriors. Who, who I, are you I boys th- thinking? Yeah. <clears throat> I, think, I still think it's, uh, it's Brisbane. Mm. I, th- I think Brisbane I, – I really like what they did against the Cowboys – uh, Walsh will come back. Hass will come back. Harrigan is just flying. Adam Reynolds, you see the difference when he's in the side. I, I, I think they're the biggest threat. I, I think, but I'm with you there, Joel. I, look, the Warriors can win the comp, in my opinion. I, I, it, it, but it, I'll tell you what's strange about them, Fletch, and we, we've, we've discussed this. Every single game this year with the Warriors has been a carbon copy. The only difference is a couple of times that they, they've hung on and got the win, but each game they've been... They've been rampant in the first 30 minutes, just blowing the opposition away. However, at the end of that 30 minutes, it's where it could be. You, like, as far as dominance, it's like 18 20 nil, but they're only 6 nil up. And then you see the opposition come back into the game and ends up being a tight finish. Every single game has been the same. They're just they're, There's a little problem in, in the mid part of their match of the Warriors. Yeah, it could be mental. Yeah. It could be a mm. mental sort of thing. But need to do more breathing. <laughs> right, there's a lot of breathing. <laughs> there's a lot of breathing yeah. going on. Where are the bunnies? Are the how, bunnies yeah. breathed life in their campaign, Matty, or you didn't see enough from them? Oh, I, I don't, look, Joel. I want want to see another few weeks of that. Um, not sure. Not don't tr- totally trust them yet. Still aspects of their game. It's yeah, it's funny. It's it's a funny competition. There's a lot of sides that can win the competition, and there's still a lot of sides I'm I'm not quite sure about. One is the Cowboys. Which we, we spoke about this, Fletch, and, and like 0 and 3, the Cowboys, well, sorry, 3 and 0 they were, but there were aspects of their game that I thought were really poor. Uh, I thought their application over 80 minutes left a lot to be desired, and I thought defensively, I thought at, at times defensively in, in those first three wins, it, in periods, they looked really vulnerable. The energy just disappeared out of their game, and you could see that loss coming against the Broncos. They were getting ready for a loss. They they remind me the the Cowboys remind me of the Broncos in like the late nineties where they they like when you used to play them mm. you used to be yeah. you used to score points quite easily against it was them. a shootout yeah but yes. they would just go yep. like, I remember playing them and it was like we'd play and we'd both get to twenty and then it was like a twenty eight twenty six <laughs> game but yeah obviously the defense was the game has changed yes. dramatically since then but they try and get it with their with their attack. Well, you ne- it's never. You might yeah. beat the lower teams. Not, doing not, you that. can't win a comp. You're not going to beat Fletch, the top four teams. Yeah. Fletch is spot spot on, mate. Like the thing about it is, I think with an, with if you want to be a football side, and you want to build a an identity, first and foremost, you've got to be a side that others don't want to play. Doesn't mean you win every week. Doesn't mean you're a side that's going to be you know even in the top four. But if you first and foremost make your team that someone that it's uncomfortable to play, that you're going to be beaten up, and you're going to have to fight for everything, then that's a really good, that's a, that's a, a very good base to work off. And I'm with you. Even when the Broncos were winning comps in the early '90s, and then you move into the mid '90s, had that glamour team. They're a side that I used to enjoy playing against because, as you said, Fletch, they'll let you play football. Mm. They'll let you move the ball around. And their thing is, okay, score 18 points, we'll score 30. And I compared that to the other, the side that I used to hate playing against, honestly gave us nightmares with the Canberra Raiders. And when you think of the Canberra Raiders, those great green machine sides, you think of their sideline to sideline ball movement and how brilliant they were in attack. But the other thing about them, boys, is they were mean bastards with their defence. Mm. They were really like, when, when they would shift the ball around, and they could blow you away in those early to mid nineties with, with attack. But the moment they turned the ball over to you, or Ricky drove the ball down field, field, they matched their attacking energy with their defence. And you had blokes like, you know, over the years you got blokes like, you know, Quentin and, and Johnny Lomax, and yeah, you, know, you had Lazo before that. And oh, oh, just lost the great man. We just lost him. Didn't I was, pay his bills. I was, was going to ask him about Lomax. Uh, what he thinks of the Lomax yeah. news, Brian? Well. <clears throat> I'll say, I'm predicting, Matty says, good riddance, yep. to bad rubbish. Yes. You know that saying? Yes, I do. You know the other saying, uh, my mother used to tell me, uh, better than a 
poke in the eye with a blunt stick. Yes. Did you ever get that? Saying? I did. Why not a sharp stick? I don't know. A sharp stick would hurt more. Yeah, but a blunt stick. Mm. I, I, don't I, know. I, never, I never understood that one. Uh, I think Matthew's there. Matthew, there. Boys. Oh, you're back. Okay. I'm back. We're just talking same. Yeah, I'm back. Um, well, Sugar's <laughs> got a question for you. No, I was going to say, have you crossed the Lomax news? Have you heard much about that? Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, I saw that. That they've said he can negotiate with other clubs. What did you say? Strange say, one. Pardon? What did you say, Matthew? Would say? I said, well, while you're off air, I said uh, Matthew will say good riddance to bad rubbish. Um, that's just. A... <laughs> did you ever have those sayings as a kid, Matty? Because my mum used to say to me, "Better than a poke in the eye with a blunt stick." Yeah. Um, I was always the opinion a sharp stick would hurt more. Mm. Where, yeah. where, where where is that? Have you got any where sayings? Do I see? Yeah. Have you got any other sayings? <laughs> my, my old man used to be, you know, like, oh, mate, I'm starving. I could do the arse out of a scabby cane chair. Ah, oh, yes. Um, Low flying. There duck. was another one. There was another one which was more of a Rodney Rue joke, which I don't think would be acceptable here. But uh, <laughs> in fact, it involved a rattlesnake. I'll just I'll, I'll <laughs> do you remember that one? Oh yes, I do. <laughs> yeah. Love the old sayings. Oh, oh, no one. one's saying them anymore. Yeah, no. Uh, and young people. Zach, the Zach Lomax thing, boys. Like I don't know. He's 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 hung in there. He's been at the club through these tough times, mm. and then like. I don't know what happens. What happens is they beat Newcastle this week and they end up winning about six or seven in a row and just get on a roll. Like I don't know. I I, I can't quite work it out. I I just find it hard sometimes. Uh, you know when uh, when players go, I want to play this position, and you know, and if you're not going to give me that jersey, then mm. I'm going to leave the club. It's a little bit. I don't know. I I just I think with Zach, my advice to Zach would have been. Zach, head down, ass up. Just keep playing the way you're playing because you're playing, you're playing fantastic. And a chance in the centres will come. And when, when you get the chance, don't lose the jersey. I just don't... I, I, he's a local boy and he's been there through the difficult times. When you start to see things turn around, I don't know. I don't think it's he's doing himself any favours well, asking already, for that release. He's already on 800, right? So he's That's pretty it. much capped out his, what he's going to get. Yeah. And and if he stays on the wing, like, who cares? Like, he, he, could, oh, he could play rep football on the wing. Well, mate, I'll come back to the fact, I think wingers have a bigger impact on the game yeah. now than centres do. Yeah. I, I don't know why he sees this as a demotion. It's, it, it's, it's a strange one. And on, on top of everything, the one thing we hear about Zach Lomax all the time is, oh, mate, he's a player of great potential. And we're wa- we've been waiting for the egg to hatch. Mm. Well, this year, Flano's you know, brought it out. He's, he's realising his potential, finally. Yep. And then, you know, he's, he's, he's not happy. Mm. I, I, it's a little hard to work out. Matty, we're going to have to let you go, but next week when I speak to you, we're going to talk about the bride that feels lied to after finding out her husband has a micro penis <laughs> on their honeymoon. So I know, I, I know. No, that's, that's a total opposite. Oh, no. What's the opposite that's of a totally micro? He's a macro. He's a macro. <laughs> yeah. John macro penis. Oh, All right, mate. Blue. Oh. <laughs> I call, you know what I call it? A meat slinky. All right, Matthew. <laughs> <laughs> that would be. It'd be interesting to do that. To go. Okay, how would. Oh, when you look at someone's, anyway, that area, yeah, to yeah. say, if it could talk, what sort of noise it would make. Oh. Yeah, flip, flip. Yeah, I'd say that Heidi would definitely be, oh, oh, would be. <laughs> or, like, or like this, you know, like a, like a thud, like a boom, <laughs> thud. <laughs> 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 like when you drop a weight or something. Oh, good on your weight <laughs> dropper. Right.